Back again, clowning around on the 4JX1 diesel engine, and I thought I'd just do a very basic video on the exhaust gas recirculation system on this for the Euro 3 emissions control. Now this stuff causes a bit of controversy and is quite confusing, but it's not that bad, and I've been having a look at how it all works together on my Tech 2 while driving around, and I think I've got it sussed. But anyway, here goes. So, the basic operation of it and the mechanics behind it goes something like this. This is your exhaust gas recirculation valve. It has a diaphragm in here that vacuum is applied to and it opens up like a little valve in here and it allows exhaust gas from the exhaust manifold to come in here and enter into the intake manifold through here. And the exhaust gases make their way to this point in the back here from over on the left hand side of the sorry a driver's side of the engine over here where the turbo is and the exhaust manifold and down below the air conditioning pump you can't see it down there but the front of the exhaust manifold there's like an extra little branch that comes out and it allows exhaust gas to pass through the front of the cylinder head up through here and into the back of the exhaust gas recirculation valve where it's ready to be released into the manifold when the engine management system opens up the exhaust gas recirculation valve. The reason you have an exhaust gas recirculation valve is to lower the emissions out of the back of your truck so instead of carcinogens you get birds and butterflies I suppose. Not entirely true but anyway. The problem with this though is it introduces rubbish into your or uh, carbon dirty exhaust fumes into your intake manifold and something else which is not only running through the intake manifold along with air is also misted oil which is fed into here via the breather tube in the top of the engine here which runs into the air intake down through the turbo through the intercooler and down into the intake manifold and you combine the dirty exhaust fumes and the misted oil which sticks to the sides of your intake manifold and it grimes up gums up and builds up over time and can affect performance and block up the intake manifold. But don't panic, there is hope yet. You can stop this happening. And there are a few options to do this. In fact, there's three options. I'll see if I can remember them all. But the first one and the most basic, easy one to do to give you an immediate response is to disconnect the pipe the vacuum pipe off the bottom of the exhaust gas recirculation valve, pull it off and block it. You have to block the pipe that leads away because you'll start to throw fault codes in the engine management system. Now once you've done that, this isn't going to work. It's not going to pull the plunger out of here and let exhaust gases get in here. Now I've run that mod just by disconnecting this for the last 10 years and I haven't done anything else just that I haven't locked off the intake where the exhaust gases come from over on the manifold and I haven't removed the butterfly plate out of the throttle body in here there are two other items I'll come to later if I remember so there are possibly a couple of downsides of just disconnecting this and I've noticed and I'm pretty sure that this truck runs a little bit rich at idle and that has to do with the throttle body over here closing up and the function of this guy here is it's got a plate which shuts and creates a slightly higher vacuum in here and allows it when this is open to pull exhaust gas into here more effectively but by blocking this off when this plate shuts it actually creates a slightly uh, starves it for air a little bit more so you're not getting a full burn of fuel I think that's why this truck idles a little bit rich um, it's a little bit stinky but I've run it like this for 11 years and it idles fine doesn't hunt or cause any issues and that's with the throttle plate still in there so this is what this led me to do this video is because I've been trying to understand this and I think I've cracked it because I've been driving around with a tech 2 plugged into it which allows me to see what this is doing what this is doing and everything else on the engine on the fly while I'm driving 
And the reason, because I've had a sudden interest in this, is because I'm thinking of removing the butterfly, but because I question everything, I don't remove the butterfly plate, but because I question everything, I just don't go and do it, because it says it on the interweb. I want to know why, and I've gone and had a look, and I'm happy that I can now go ahead and remove that. And I'll go on the vehicle now, and we'll start her up, and I'll show you the, the operation of these two valves working on the Tech 2. So I got the Tech 2 cranked up, so we'll just run through the menu system here. It might be a bit boring for you, but diagnostics, and this truck is a 99. 1999 Enter Trooper Bighorn Jackaroo, that's us powertrain, and we want to go down to 4JX1, that one there, and we confirm, and we look away for a minute because you'll see all my details, and we go back up again, and we go data, data display, and this will show us all the data on the flight. Now I got this Tech 2 off AliExpress, I think it was about 400 bucks, and then I found the cards somewhere else, but this has been invaluable for diagnosing stuff, and it plugs into Suzuki, Holden, you name it, it's bloody good. Reprogram injectors too. Anyway, I'm going to go through and select some items here that relate to the emissions, and it'll bring them all up on the screen at once, and then I'll come back to you and we'll talk through what's going on. Alright, so we're now fired up on the Tech 2 and I've brought up the information I need. So, this one here, this line, exhaust gas recirculating valve is currently open about 48% out of 100. So, exhaust gas recirculation valve is this bit, I'll go show you now. That guy there, that's exhaust gas recirculation valve. And, and the next part you want to understand is the throttle position. This is the throttle plate in there that moves around, it has nine positions. Nine, as it states there, is pretty much completely closed. And I'll go show you what that bit is now. So the throttle position butterfly lives in here. And it's controlled with a stepper motor. And on the back there is a throttle position sensor. And those two work together. And this is the plate that shuts to create a like vacuum in the manifold to when this valve is open to draw the gas in more effectively. Alright now that we've got our head around all that wacky stuff I'll give you a quick explanation of what I've observed today while driving around. So during heavy acceleration or 100k an hour highway running the stepper motor is fully open for the butterfly and the EGR regulating valve is closed. Under light, light running, not accelerating, but where you back off and you just coast, but you've still got the throttle on, we find that the, at low revs the stepper motor will pretty much fully close and your exhaust gas recirculating valve will also open and let dirty exhaust fumes into your intake manifold. Now here's a key bit of information because some people on the World Wide Web seem to, seem to think the throttle, throttle position butterfly seems to assist in deacceleration of slowing the engine down. I don't believe that is true and that is because under, if you're cruising along in third gear and you take your foot off the gas, yes it does restrict but then you chop it down a gear so the revs bump up and you're actually using the engine to deaccelerate it opens up the throttle butterfly fully and doesn't restrict any air so based on that it does not offer any engine braking from what I've seen. At idle like we are at the moment an interesting observation is you'll notice the throttle plate is mostly shut we're introducing some exhaust gases into the engine However, if I turn on the air conditioning, the exhaust gas valve is open, sorry, closed, so no exhaust gas is getting into the intake manifold, but we're still restricting the intake manifold with the throttle position butterfly being mostly closed. Why does it do that? Maybe it offers smoother idling, I don't know. Maybe when I remove the butterfly plate completely, the idle might get a little bit rougher. I don't know, but we'll give it a go and I'll see. But I'll probably have to make another video after I've done all of this work. So, to roughly recap, 
you can pretty much guarantee that the EGR regulating valve and the throttle position plate purely work together and the throttle position plate doesn't offer any other function other than causing a bit of a vacuum in the intake manifold to introduce exhaust gases more effectively into the intake. Right, so that's where I finish off with this video. I'm going to make another one, but um, that's a rough introduction to the function of those bits, what they do, or what I think they do, and we've got some evidence here and been driving around, so safe to say I've been driving around for many years with just the exhaust gas uh, valve disconnected and I've never really had any issues at all, in fact none, haven't noticed anything. So I'm going to make another video where I'm going to pull the throttle plate out, remove it, put it back in, I'll show you how we've done it. and as I pull it out we'll um, look down the neck of it and we can actually manually drive the plate open and close with the Tech 2 so I'll do another video of that. Alright, hope that helps, thanks for watching, see you later.